Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois, a PGA teaching professional. My videos talk both about golf and about being a Christian and living in these last days. Today's a very important message I want to get out there. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick tip for golf and then we're going to get right into it. There's an old saying that's very true in golf and that is swing with ease into the breeze. When you got a wind in your face, the last thing you want to do is swing hard and hit the ball hard because that spins the ball too much. The ball gets up in the air too quickly, gets up into the wind, and you lose a lot of distance. You want to swing nice and easy, you hit, make a smooth swing so the ball comes off with less spin, takes off lower, and goes through the wind better. You'll actually get more distance by swinging easier when you're hitting into the wind. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's get into the, to the uh, prophecy part of it because this is a very, very important message. I love to read the Bible, and it's, it's incredible because there's so many prophecies in there that have either come true or we see coming true almost on a daily basis now. And I maintain that the Bible is as up-to-date as tomorrow's news. So I want to go to Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1. And it says, Behold, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins. And I'm going to tell you that that's basically happened already. The, the Syrian civil war, and by the way, Damascus has always been a city. It has never ceased to be a city up until about now. And you, can, you go back through history, there has always been a Damascus. But the Syrian civil war has had over 100,000 casualties. Chemical weapons have been used. And there have been over 2.5 million Syrian war refugees. The war is raging on, and basically, at this point, Damascus is a heap of ruins, just like Isaiah said would happen. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood is fighting against the Syrian government because the Muslim Brotherhood is trying to take over the entire Middle East, and in their mind, they'd like to eventually take over the entire world through Sharia law. Since Obama has been president, here are some things that have happened in addition to what's going on in Syria. Yemen's longtime leader, I believe he was president from 1978 to 2012, I believe, Ali Abdullah Saleh was overthrown. Egypt's president, Hosni Mubarak, who was actually president for 30 years and was um, was a ally of ours, was overthrown for Mohamed Mursi, who had Obama's support. And he's already been overthrown in Egypt by the people. And Egypt is in complete chaos now. Iran has a new leader, Hassan Rouhani. And he and the Ayatollah still want to blow Israel off of the map. Yet Obama is willing to allow them to continue their nuclear program. We're, we're believing that they're only going to do it for peaceful uses, for energy. Why does Iran need nuclear energy. They have all the oil they need. They don't want nuclear energy for, for power. They want to blow Israel off the map. <clears throat> Afghanistan has a new leader, Hamid Karzi. Libya overthrew Gaddafi. But the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda attacked our embassy and Obama's covering that up. Why is that? Because his Muslim Brotherhood buddies were involved. Obama has six Muslim Brotherhood members in his administration. The same guy who says he's a Christian. Our president, who's a Muslim, has six Muslim Brotherhood members in the administration. He's not fighting for the same team that we're on. The Psalm 83 war is about to take place. And I just want to read a few verses out of Psalm 83. Real quickly. <clears throat> o God, do not keep silent, and do not hold your peace, or be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. 
Psalm 83 then goes on to talk all about all the Muslim nations gathering against Israel. We see that forming right now. And our president does everything he can to back them and stab our, our greatest ally, Israel, in the back every chance he can. Now, again, this has all been prophesied. It's not surprising to me. You knew it was going to happen. But it's just incredible, because Obama was going to be this transparent president. He's going to try to bring everybody together. And in reality, he's been the most, the least transparent president, and the most divisive president probably in our history. And Henry Kissinger said in 2009, conflicts across the globe and an international respect for Barack Obama have created the perfect setting for the establishment of a new world order. International organizations like the Bilderberg Group, Council on Foreign Relations, and the Club of Rome, these organizations are the ones that pull all the strings, and their main puppet is Obama. And I'm telling you, he's doing a perfect job. He's doing exactly what they want him to do. He's supporting the rise of the Islamic faith. He's supporting Sharia law. He's supporting Muslim Brotherhood takeovers of all the Middle Eastern Arab nations. Why is that? Because that's what the New World Order system wants him to do. That's what they're doing behind the scenes. And what's really happening is he's creating world disorder right now. And what, what he's doing is, is he's preparing the world to accept the coming Antichrist. And the world will see that this man comes, who's coming along will seem to have all the answers. And the world will trust him. And they will be more than, more than willing to accept him because of the mess that Obama is helping to create right now, the world conflict that you see every day on the news. So I maintain that when Assad finally falls in, the Syri in Syria, we have to really be careful because I think that's probably one of the last things that's going to happen prior to the rise of the Antichrist. And I've mentioned this almost every day now about the peace agreement that John Kerry is over in Israel working on right now with the Palestinians and with Israel. And that when that gets signed, that will start the final seven years. And I don't think Obama is smart enough or well-liked enough to pull this agreement off. But what I do think can happen is a war like the Psalm 83 war could happen soon that would make people more willing to accept peace, a peace agreement. I think that the Antichrist who's coming along next will pull this agreement together and actually be the one to get it signed, like Daniel 9.27 says. But I firmly believe that Obama is doing exactly what he was put on this earth at this time to do, and he's doing exactly what the international communities want him to do. And that's continue to create this world chaos and setting the stage for the final end events. I just did a video about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner to Jesus. He was sent to prepare the way for Jesus, get people ready for their Messiah. And I, I really believe that Barack Obama is the forerunner to the Antichrist. He is here, like Henry Kissinger said, to help usher in a new world order. And all you have to do is read your Bible and watch the news, and you can see that all these things are taking place, and the return of Jesus is right there at the door. Obama is not who he says he is. In fact, many of you probably don't know that when Obama applied to Harvard, he applied as a foreign exchange student at Harvard. Yet he says he's an American citizen born in Hawaii. Really? Then why did he apply to Harvard as a foreign exchange student? And is his name Barry Satoro? Is it Barack Obama? We don't really know much about this guy. And he's in his second term as President of the United States. Unbelievable. People, it's time to wake up. Time is short.
Let's get our hearts ready. It's coming soon.